Welcome to Beyond Belief, a project looking at Kansas City's religious diversity and asking this question, if people reach out across borders and boundaries of faith, can they take what they learn from those encounters and make the city and region a better place? Beyond Belief, Three Stories of Faith in Action, begins at a Methodist church not far from Country Club Plaza. The church had been recovering from a dip in membership, slowly starting to attract more young families, when a woman, driven by murder and chaos from Democratic Republic of Congo, started to attend. Here's what happened next. When I was younger, I was growing up and I have gifts. My gift is to create minister because, you know, uh, Jesus say to call the people from outside and bring it, them inside. This is my gift I have. God who used me in Africa, he's gonna use me to here. But that's why I was looking that place, you know, Methodist Church, and I told them I need to create choir here, I need to create ministry here. I was starting, I was starting, I was me and my family only. And now we have many, 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 many over hundred people. It's amazing grace. Uh, but I didn't believe it. <laughs> it's the only God. I was attending the, the second service one Sunday and, and I did notice that we had some people I hadn't seen before. They clearly were African immigrants. And our choir did a song uh, selection that was pretty lively. And they all started like applauding and this sort of trilling noise. <laughs> Amen. And I have to tell you, the congregation was surprised and delighted. It, it, was, it was great, and that, that was my first introduction. And I, I remember thinking, gosh, I hope they come back. And they did, yeah, in force, as it turned out. Amen. These are people that have lived in refugee camps for years have gotten off the plane and in the first week they look for a church. I mean, I don't know many Americans that would do that. And that they have a commitment. They are here every Sunday. Oh, we've gone to see him since all the folks here don't speak our language. How will it be? I say, okay, there's no problem because God is God of all the people, of all the culture, of all belief. So he understands all the language and he's so pleased to see them all worship in their language, in, you know, in their belief, just trusting him as they are. So he will come them all. Uh, we have been practicing a, uh, a very famous prayer in Swahili. In, in English, it says, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. In Swahili, it's Yesu Manawa Daudi Uni Rehemu. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. 
Jesu Manawa Gaudi Uni Rehen. Walter, why do you think that? What happens on Easter? What happened on Easter? Yeah, what happened on Easter a long time ago? ago? Who came back to life? That's right, and Jesus came back. Can we celebrate that today? Can we? Yeah. yeah. We sure can. Can we celebrate it tomorrow? Yes. yes. Because it shows God's love. Amen. Amen. All right. Bye, everybody. There are challenges. Right now in my class, we can get as many as 17, 20 kids. And I'm in the room next door, which isn't really meant for that many kids. So, it, you know, we have logistical challenges. And, you know, we could use... We, we do get, manage to get some adults from the church to help, but I think we have some challenges with expectations. I've been having a series of conversations with our Sunday school teachers for a few months. That panic that I saw in July <laughs> is replaced with genuine love and care for your kids. We requested, uh, probably individually, said we need to kind of organize this, that you know, the teachers are getting tired, we're frustrated because um, we're not being able to provide them a good Sunday school curriculum and, and experience. And so we have slowly just met with, okay, what are our expectations? We've learned a lot about their cultural issues. Um, I w it was shared to me that a lot of them live in areas that are not the safest, and so they're not comfortable having their kids play outside. Well, you can imagine at this age, so when they come here and they are very feel safe and comfortable, they want to run and play, so we start our school or classes with uh, active singing, dancing, something, games, and which they just love. Well, the foundation that we are seeking to build is to be a community. And so we've come up with four words that are the ingredients of forming that foundation. Welcoming. Yani kukaribisha. Respect. Heshima. Safety. Usalama. Appreciation. Na ongera. I do remember one Easter, there was a woman that kind of stopped me and she says, what has happened to this church? And it turns out she only comes once a year at Easter. <laughs> she seemed just pleased by the whole thing. And it's like, well, since you only come once a year anyway, um, you know, I'm not sure we're going to worry too much about <laughs> her, her problem. But I, I actually am very proud of Central and the way people have adjusted and embraced the, these new, um, you know, these new neighbors coming in. As for me, my vision just, we want just to see this church growing up, being mixed with all uh, the people from different backgrounds. So th that's what we need. We don't just have to st stand on one side being African, African congregation. No, we, we want just to f mix, to be uh, like a, a very mixed congregation. Yeah, you know, everything is plan of God. You cannot say, you cannot change the plan of God. Now we are waiting. If God wants to give us the church, they can give us. But if God makes another plan, we will go that God needs. Yeah, that's we keep praying. Yeah. <laughs> In Kansas City, Kansas, 
A church founded in the 1890s now attracts people who never saw themselves as Presbyterians. Taking a stand for economic justice and immigration reform, the people of the church find a common language while speaking every word of worship in both English and Spanish. Well, something that really attracted me from this church was how they are committed to help others. No matter race, no matter language, no matter nationalities. And that's part of what is our call as Christians. Hey, Betty, Betty, wake up. Beatriz, wake up, wake up, good morning, it's time to wake up, you know what's today, Easter Sunday. Para mí es muy importante que el servicio sea bilingüe, ya que mis hijos ahorita ya no están, mis hijos se sienten un poco más eh, cómodos hablando inglés. Mi esposo no habla inglés, eh, entonces para mí es muy importante estar en una congregación y estar escuchando lo que es la palabra de Dios en español y en inglés. Children are welcome to come forward at this time. Kids, do you want to come forward? We'll have a little chat. Is there anything special about today? I ask the obvious question. Hay algo especial acerca del día de hoy? Yes. Easter. What is Easter? Es el día de Pascua. Pero ¿qué es la Pascua? When he what? Resurrected. When he resurrected. Cuando él resucitó. Being an interpreter, the first five years, it was really hard. It was such a struggle. Just because I felt I didn't do it as good as I should. But I kept doing it and praying about how I can do it, it better. The first thing that he said, I've come to bring Good news to the rich. ¿Será que dijo, y vengo trayendo buenas nuevas a los ricos? Who did he say he came to bring good news to? The poor. The first time I was invited here at the church, it was really weird because I become from an um, evangelical background. I was raised evangelical in Ecuador. And at the beginning, I was kind of hesitant about if this was my perfect fit or not. Some people believe, oh yeah, you wanna be there because you wanna be part of being a white people, or you know, you wanna be involved with the white people or with the Americans. You wanna be there because it's easier. But it's not. As actually, it's really challenging because uh, this church is not like a common church. This church is different. It's a white church in a mainly 80% population of Hispanics neighborhood. Here we lack resources, we lack money, we lack even support from the people around the neighborhood or the city. And even though we try to be the voice for those that don't have any voice. 
Gillis is the most faithful and inspired woman I have met in my life. Every single Sunday morning, she's here. I think she's a great inspiration for every one of us. Well, I've been coming since 1941, and it's been my church family ever since I was a teenager myself. And I was married in the church back in 1947. I've been real faithful, and I think you have to have faith and hope. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I'd like to say that without the way, there is no going. Without the truth, there is no knowing. Without the life, there is no living. The steps here at the church are quite a few, and it's hard to get up and down the steps because my knees aren't too great. But other than that, uh, I will keep coming as long as I'm able and as long as my children will let me drive. Amen. Amen. After they'd eaten, they sang a hymn and they went out. Después de que ellos comieron, cantaron un himno y salieron. But there might have been some announcements before they did that and an offering. So we're going to do an offering and announcements. We have uh, La Paz House this week, Monday through Friday, from 4 to 6. And if you have some free time, don't hesitate to come from 4 to 6 and help Lee lead in La Paz House. We didn't necessarily say, oh, we want to become a part of this Presbyterian church. We saw good things happening here. The church that's dedicated to the community and dedicated to the people. And that's what we were attracted to. They were acting out their faith. And we want to be a part of that. If we can collectively love God and serve God and love our neighbors, I'm all in. Every day on school day, you know, I'll come over here and lock the doors at four. And sometimes there's a deluge of kids. Sometimes there's a handful. There's a lot of energy, a lot of fun, a lot of games. I want to see them see that God, the church, religion, our faith is a part of everyday life. How do we love God? How do we love our neighbors? Es, es muy difícil eh, cuando los niños vienen a la casa de la escuela y me dicen, mami, si ¿sí es cierto que nos vamos a tener que regresar a nuestro país? Y les digo, no, yo les, les aseguro que no, que no va a pasar eso, que nosotros eh, nos quedaremos aquí, nos quedaremos, que ellos, queda, se, ellos se, seguirán yendo a la misma escuela, que seguiremos estando en la misma iglesia, que nada malo va a pasar. Two schools, one white, one black, one Jewish, one non-denominational, take a trip together to learn about their common heritage in the fight for civil rights. Can their journey provide clues for solving Kansas City's persistent divisions of race? Today, uh, we're at University Academy with students from my school, Hyman Brand Hebrew Academy. And this is the third time that our students have gotten together. We're getting ready to go on a civil rights tour of the South, uh, which will include stops in Atlanta, Tuskegee, Montgomery, Selma, and Birmingham. My name is Sagi. That's what makes uh, this trip so important. You're going to have a bunch of African-American students going down to retrace the civil rights marches and, and iconic sites and events with uh, a bunch of uh, students from uh, a Hebrew Academy. Uh, I, I think it's so powerful by just the thought of it. Ah. I'm good, how are you? Yeah, you can get all your stuff over there, that would be excellent. I am, this is gonna be amazing. <laughs> Turn it over, even if playing it. Yes, the question is, what do you expect to get from this trip? What I expect to get from this trip is more friendships, because I already have established friendships with the people at my school, so it would be nice to have more friendship with the people at the school. Namaste. Namaste. We're on a bus full of people. Hey, for 10 hours. Jews on the bus, go around and around. Say hi to the camera. So where are we, guys? We are in Atlanta. 
Georgia. In the Center, Center, Center for Civil Rights. Rights. Center for right. Civil and Human Rights. It's, um, and it's been going really well so far. We've been hanging out with the University Academy kids. At lunch today, I had a really great conversation with some of them, and I can see the bombs already starting to form. It's pretty great. Now when we stop, you're going to go straight to the steps of the church. You do not stop and act like a tourist. You go straight to the steps of the church. Is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. Let's see how well they follow instructions. The road to, the, to his job at the White House started right here in Selma, and you're retracing those steps. How fortunate can you get? If you don't know where we've been as a nation, there's no way you could take us where we need to be. Period. Bottom line, there's no arguing about that. Tie that shoe. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this monument is dedicated to, to the people whose lives were taken for us to have the rights we had today. I don't like your hair. You like it, huh? Oh, that was rude, wasn't it? Well, I told the truth, but I didn't mean to say it out loud, okay? okay. <laughs> Oftentimes, you hear they gave their lives, right? They didn't give anything. Those people were murdered. Murdered by hateful racist people. Words are powerful, aren't they? When I kept talking about your hair, how did you feel? And then there's your friends were over there laughing at you, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Words are powerful, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Your hair is gorgeous. Thank you. You're gorgeous. Thank you. Don't you let anybody tell you that it's not. But words are powerful, aren't they? Yes. Okay, you forgive me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Movements for social change are just like jigsaw puzzles. Everybody has a piece. If your piece is missing, is the picture complete? No. Repeat after me. I, I am, am the, the most important piece. Most important piece. But, you know, we're too busy doing other things to look at what's happening to us today. Affirmative action, gone. The Voting Rights Act that we brought in that children, just like you, made happen on August 6, 1965, is being picked up and taken apart just like that jigsaw puzzle. Come on. Come over here, baby, here in the crosswalk. <laughs> I was really like spiritually connected to what happened. I mean, it, to me, like it was only what, like 51 years since that had happened. And so to be walking in the same, like on the same bridge, like the footsteps of people who made all the things that I, like I just voted last week. So the fact that that was possible because the sacrifices and the courage of the people that walked that same bridge that I just walked and it just felt like, wow. I felt a connection there and I just felt important and I felt like, how much of a difference it really made. Everyone always says, like, the Jews had such an important impact on the civil rights movement, and being there with them and us from UA being um, all black, like, it was like crossing over the bridge hand in hand with someone of a different culture or a different race. That, that diversity didn't bother us anymore. It was more so we were like, let's just do this because we're doing this together. If you think about it, our two schools walking over that bridge, it's just something special showing how far we've come and still how much more we have to do. Okay. What's that song? I'm sorry. 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 i it started off as a rap battle, and then we just all started singing along, and then that was the key moment where, like, we all started bonding, really. But it's okay, because I got that tap. 
It says Everybody together. We light this fire to see more clearly that the earth, the human race, are not for burning. We light this fire to see more clearly the rainbow in our many colored faces. So the big question I have for you guys, why did we take this journey? Here we are at the end. Why did we do this? I mean, why did we do the journey together? At first I thought like, I'm from a different place than these people, like we're not the same. But then I learned like, where they're from is not much different. Like they're only in Kansas, I knew that, but they're basically from the same place as I am, so. It's not as different as I thought it was going to be. Raise your glass. The kind. The light. The light. The light. Drink your cup. Everybody wants one. They'll give money and stand in line just to receive one. But while you're waiting on the miracle you want, don't forget the miracle you are. <laughs> Listen.